So good morning to everyone present here. Welcome to our webinar on real-time recommendations for e-commerce systems with me on MongoDB. I am Mukta Ashok and I'll be a moderator for today's webinar. Now as we begin, let's review a few pointers on how we can interact during the webinar. Now we are looking at the attendee interface of GoToWebinar. There is a viewer window on the left. So this is how you see everything that we will be sharing from our screen. And the control panel at the right is how we can participate in today's event. As we would love to hear from you, so please do ask questions and share your comments. As mentioned, this option is located on the right hand side tab. We'll be reviewing your question as they come in and we'll take them up towards the end during the question and the answer session. Also, the webinar is being recorded and everyone will receive an email with a link to view a recording of today's event. So as we move on to the webinar, I would also like to introduce you to our company, Suyati Technologies. Suyati focuses on delivering niche IT solutions and services, including CMS, CRM, and e-commerce. We are an Ectron featured implementation partner, Microsoft Gold partner with extensive experience in .NET, free and open source, and mobile app technologies. And speaking about our expertise in free and open source technologies, we have five plus experience in design, development, and deployment of complex open source. We have also seen a gamut of successful projects which include a conference app, a job placement portal, an amusement park management system, etc. Now I'd like to introduce you to our featured speaker, Taha KP. Taha has been working as a software developer at Suyati Technologies for the past two years. His experience lies in web application development using Python Django and Ruby on Rails. I'll quickly take you through the agenda of the day. We'll start off with the advantages of real-time suggestions for e-commerce systems, followed, up, followed by MongoDB and its architecture. Then we'll move on to the insight on schema design, indexing, and sharding for real-time analytics workloads. Then we'll, we'll be speaking about how to model your data for analytics. And we'll conclude with how to make, your, how to make use of MongoDB's unique features to construct an e-commerce system. So now I will, that's all from my end. I'd like to pass it over to Taha. Over to you, Taha. Thank you, Mukta. Hi, everyone. We can start this session with the advantages of real time sessions, or we can call it as a recommendation system. In a recommendation system, these systems are based on an actual user behavior. This is the biggest, biggest advantage of recommendation system. Watching people in their natural environment and making decisions directly on the results. For example, the suggested post feature of Facebook. Also, recommendation systems are great for discovery. For example, frequently bought together of Amazon website make surprising recommendations which are similar to what we already like. Recommendation systems are effective tool for personalization. We often take recommendations from friends and families because we trust their opinion. They know what we like better than the anyone else. This is the sole reason they are good at recommending things. This is what recommendation system try to model. Recommendation system are always up to date. A new product in Amazon gets recommended as long as people rate it highly. Recommendation system help e-commerce sites to increase their size and it helps to convert new users to premium users and maximize user engagement in the site. Let's move on to the recommendation ways. There are mainly two ways, item-based filtering and user-based filtering. Let's look into the detail of each of these filtering. First one is item-based filtering. It is a simple method to recommend an item. Item-based filtering uses a series of discrete characteristics of an item to find out the similar items such as same brand, same category, price range, etc. 
in this case system needs only very little little information to get started in this case recommendations are based on the matching keywords there are some drawbacks for this approach it is far more limited in scope it can only make recommendation that are similar to the original sheet it means using only the metadata here you can see the example of item based filtering here system is recommending new item on the basis of the similarity not considering the other informations you can move on to the second filtering that is user based filtering in this approach system will create a model from users past behavior to recommend an item building a model from users past behavior here system will consider three things item previously purchased not purchased but added to cart numerical rating given to those products system also uses similar decisions which is done by the other users one of the drawback of this approach is it requires large information to get started here is an example for this approach here first user this first user purchased a pizza and salad after which he bought coca cola also system will find out other users who bought pizza and salad and then recommend coca cola to other users and we can move on to the mongodb and its architecture why what is mongodb mongodb is a nosql database arise in the middle of 2000s in mongodb instead of using tables and rows using collections and documents document comprises set of key value pairs the database is uses a document storage and data interchange format called bison binary representation of json collection do not enforce any schema document within a collection can have different fields let's see why it is important mongodb is highly scalable and sharding scalable with sharding and has good performance also can easily create a replica set of databases mongodb automatically automatically shard and distribute data among different servers there is no schema for collections so you can easily add or remove fields from collection that means developer writes application code and mongodb follows that no need to write separate code to update the mongodb it is full it has full index support we can easily learn the mongodb and get started it is also free of cost let's move on to the architecture of mongodb here you can see the application 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 will be our web application in this mongo s mongo s is a routing and load balancing process that acts as an interface between an application and mongodb sharded clusters in this mongodb instance mongodb is a mongodb database server the mongodb process starts the mongodb server as a daemon the mongodb server manages data requests and format and manages the background operations config server config server is a mongodb instance that store all the metadata associated with started cluster a production started cluster requires at least three config servers 
each one a separate machine shard you can see three shards over the shard is a single mongod instance or a replica set that stores some portion of a sharded clusters total data set in production all shard should be a replica set each shard contains different data a replica set in a mongodb is a group of mongodb process that maintain the same data set we'll explain more about these things will later coming slide in replica set in a mongodb replica set provides redundancy and increase data availability with multiple copy, copies of data on a different database servers replication protects a data database from loss of a single server replication also allows us to recover the hardware failure and service interruptions with additional copies of data you can dedicate one to reporting or backup in a replica set one mongodb the primary receive all the right operations all other instance secondaries apply operations from the primary so that they have the same data set the primary accepts all the right operation from the client replica set can have only one primary by default client can read from the primary however client can specify read preference to read from secondary also let's move on to the mongodb sharding mongodb uses sharding to support deployments with very large data set and high throughput operations sharding or horizontal scaling by contrast divides the data set and distributes the data over multiple servers each shard in a each shard is a dependent database independent database and collectively the shard make up a single logical database sharding reduces the number of operations each shard handles and the amount of data that each server needs to store to shard a collection you need to select a shard key a shard key is a, a shard key is either an index field or an indexed compound field that exists in every document in a collection this i will show you later next we can move on to the insight on schema design indexing and sharding of real time analytics workloads this i will explain by showing a demo in this demo we are going to set up a set up this configuration in in this local machine this configuration will contain four shards with three replicas at each the three config servers one mongoes total 15 mongodb instances and one mongoes first we have to create database create directory for each of these mongodb instances because we have to specify the databases database folder for each of these mongodb instance for that we can start the demo first open the command prompt of windows i am using windows machine to create a folder in windows let's use md command i am going to you create folders for each of these mongodb instance total 15 folders folders are created now we can start 
start the instances. First, we can start with the config servers. I'm going to start an instance on port number 26050 as a config server. For that, just run this command. I will explain what this command. Here, start b will run the instance in a background same as in fork in ubuntu this mongod is a command to start a mongod mongod instance all other options are optional config server declares that this mongod instance serves as a, as the config database of shadow cluster in the db path the directory where the mongod instance stored its data in the port number specify the tcp port on which the mongod instance listen for the client connection and the also the log path all logs will write into the specified file copy this command first config server is running same way we can start the two config servers also i am just copying those commands only the difference is port number. All config servers are running now. And we need to start the other shard instances. For that, let's run this command. Same command, only the difference is replica set here we have to specify the name of the replica we can give any name but should be same for each of these shade mongod instance i'm just copying these three mongod command that will run all these three mongod instance same way I am going to run the instance for the other shards, shard B, shard C and shard D. All MongoD instances are running now. We have to start the MongoS, the routing instance. For that, run this command. Same command with instead of MongoD, we have to use MongoS. Then we need to specify the config databases. We have currently three databases, config databases each one with separate with comma and also the log path and the port number also All instances are running now. We need to configure the shards. For that, 
we have to log in to the any of these instance and initialize the replica set then only it will become as a one replica set otherwise it will be a separate instance for that i am going to log into the first mongo instance which is running on 27000 to log into a mongo d instance just use mongo then the port number after login if you check the status of the replica set you can see not initialized to initialize a replica set we have to run rs dot initialize initiate i'm going to run that this will take time few seconds after that you have to add the other two instance also which is running on 27001 27002 these two after the initialization we can add those two instance mongod instance replica set is initialized we can add other two instance add it if you want to check you can check the status here you can see the other two instances with current instance is log out from here shard is configured same way we have to configure other three shards for that we have to do the same thing log into any of these instance and initialize replica set and add, add other two instance replica set is taking some time Really, I am logging to this first instance and trying to add these two other instance. After that, I have to log into this one and add these two. Shard B is configured. We have to configure the shard C. For that, I am going to log into the first instance. It is running on two seven two double zero. You we'll check and see that. Uh, 
after that i have to initialize this configure this chart details that is the last one Let's move. Let's wait a few minutes to set up this replica sets. Shard C is configured same way. We can config configure the shard D also. After that, we have to configure these shards with the MongoS, the routing instance. That we can do by logging to the MongoS instance, which is running on 27077, by adding asset and shard. This will add shards to the MongoS instance. Shard, add shard, replica set name, then any of the MongoD server, which is part of the shard a replica set. Same way we can add the other shards also. Shard B, replica set, and any of the replicas. Sharding configuration is almost completed. Only thing I we have to configure these charts with the MongoS. After finishing this initialization, we can start that one. In some machine, it will take time. Okay, that is done. Then now we can start configuring these shards with the MongoS instance. For that, log into the Mo MongoS instance. Oh. 
Ok. To log into the Mongo instance, just use Mongo and port number of the Mongo instance. Okay, you can see over here Mongo is this instance is a Mongo is. Then we can add the shards to this instance with this add shard command. You can see shard added, shard is shard D, okay, one same thing for the other shards also. If you want to see the status, just check assets.status. That will display the shard information. Shards, all the shards. All the setups are completed. We can start using these things. I am starting with creating a database store database for that just run use store that will create a store database we have to enable sharding on this for that just run enable sharding sh dot enable sharding and db name that db is sharded if you see the status of sh dot status you can see inside the databases you can see that database let's move on to the creating a collections collections are same as the tables in the rdbms to create a collection just use directly tv dot products it will create a collection products collection and insert one document sample document to insert a document just use products dot insert and name and just inserting a product with name price and category we want to fetch that record from database let's use products dot find one method that will return one doc record from the collection here you can see mongodb is assigning an unique id for each of this document say now we have to I am going to create an index on this name product name field. For that, just use ensure index name one and whether it is unique or not. This way, you can create an index in MongoDB. I am going to shard this collection also. To shard this collection, just use set dot shard collection and the collection name and the shard key it will be i am using the name key and whether it is unique or not the collection is sharded same way i am going to create the customers collection also creating a collection and inserting a document to 
that collection collection customer collection is created and inserted one document id minus one first name first last name purchases i'm creating a customer collection customer document with the uh, default five product inside is purchases if you want to see that document you can use find one that will return that document from the collection i'm going to do the same thing I'm going to create an index on the id key index is created going to share this collection collection is started is you see the shard status inside the databases store databases you can see these two collections customers products we can i'm going to insert more data to these two collections in order to uh, do the demo product size 100 products and 10000 customers products with the random price and random category i'm also going to products are inserted same way i'm going to insert the customers also For the customer, we are going to insert 10,000 records, so that will take time. I will explain what I am trying to insert. First name, last name, any of the names from here. Purchases, default for five purchases for each of these customers. I am taking a random value. After this, we can try to use this information <coughs> informations to recommend items. To get the number of records in a collection, we can use this count method. We can verify after this operation. All records are inserted. This verify the number of records in each collection. In products collection, we have 101 record. In customers collection, we have 10,001 record. Now we can start the recommendation things. Previously, I told that there are mainly two types of recommendation item based and user base you can start with the item base just assume that new user is coming to our system and buying a new product just do that new user without any purchases so assume that he is purchasing a product one. If you see the purchases of that user, you can see the product one. After that purchase, we can recommend new items to that user. For that, 
I am going to do the find operation on product collection, product collection uh, with category, same category, matching the same category and price almost same as the product, same of the purchased product. You can see the products, product 81, product 6, product 86 with the same category and the price are almost similar to the purchased product. We can recommend it, these products to that user. This is how item based filtering is working. Now we can move to the next fil next filtering, user based filtering. For that, just assume that this user purchased one more item. Product 2. You see the purchases of that user, product 1 and product 2. To find out the similar products which are bought the other user after buying these two, product I am using aggregate framework of MongoDB. This will be a little bit complex for you. I will explain that for you first. Aggregation is a, actually a pipeline. You can each of these output of first operation will go to the input of the second operation. First, I am using match of operation. Um, in this match, in this match operation, finding out the all the purchases, all the customers which have all the purchases of the new user and doing unwind on purchases array. We need to unwind that purchases array because we have to group on based on the purchase products. Then group stage. This group stage we are grouping based on the purchases. Then collecting the product name first of the purchases. Customer names adding to the uh, array and count how many times how many users bought that then the projecting the output this is same as in the select operation RDBMS we are selecting all the field except the ID field sorting on the base run counting degree descending order skipping the first two items because those items customer already purchased and limiting the output to 10 if you see the output you can see product 49 customer names these three customer four customers actually three bought this product 49 and product 30 these products you can recommend to the current user this way the user based filtering are working that is that is all about the demo we can go back to the presentation how to model your data for analytics some of the point you have you must remember when you model your database database must support simple and fast query and update of fast query update operations use more complex documents and keep several aggregate values in each document like sum average count that will increase the performance also you should avoid following situation which can degrade the performance document growing significantly after creation queries without using indexes 
deeply nested documents how to make the how to make use of mongodb's unique features do the same impossible mongodb can incorporate any kind of data any structure any format any source no matter how often it changes your analytical engine can can be comprehensive and real time scale big mongodb is built to scale up on commodity hardware in your data center or in the cloud and without complex hardware or extra software real time mongodb can analyze data of any structure directly within the database given your result in real time without expensive data warehouse loads that's it any questions so thank you taha and thank you all now it's time for the question and answer session now uh, we are ready to address your questions type in your question using the question feature on the go to webinar Have few questions here. Okay, so the first question for today is: Does MongoDB support SQL? No. Our MongoDB does support a rich ad hoc query language of its own. I already shown that. Okay, so moving on to our next question. Uh, does MongoDB require a lot of RAM? Not necessary. It's certainly possible to run MongoDB on a machine with small amount of RAM. MongoDB automatically uses all free memory on the machine as it, as its cache. So I hope that was clear. Moving on to a third question: Does MongoDB handle caching? Yes, MongoDB keep all the all of the most recently uses data in a RAM. If you have created index of your queries and your working data set fits in RAM, MongoDB serves all queries from memory. Okay, moving on. Uh, next question is: How does MongoDB address SQL or query injection? As a client program assembles a query in MongoDB, it builds a Bison object, not a string. Thus, traditional SQL inject injection attacks are not a problem. Okay, I hope that was clear. Now, the next question for the day is: How does MongoDB distribute data across shards? Sharding must be specifically enabled on a collection. After enabling sharding on the collection, MongoDB will assign a various ranges on a, of a collection data to the different shards in the cluster. The cluster automatically correct imbalances between shards by migrating ranges of data from one shard shard to another. Okay, so we have one more question. That is, how do you determine what fields to index? A number of factors determine what field to index. Indexing, including selectivity, fitting index to RAM, reusing index in multiple queries when possible, and creating indexes that can support all the fields in a given query. Okay, so that was the end of our question and answer session. Thank you, Taha. It was a pleasure to have you on board. And uh, this is all the time we had. Now please do look up for a follow-up mail that will alert you on the on-demand status of the webinar, so that you can review any material that you missed, or you can simply go through again. So, any further queries that you have will be taken offline. You can reach us at our social media, or you can simply drop us a mail at webinar at salesy.com. That brings us to the end of our webinar. On behalf of Taha and our team at Siyadi Technologies, I'd like to thank you for joining us and taking your time to attend our webinar. Have a great day.